Welcome to the New World Order. The big Aussie 6 as we know it is dead. The locally built Holden Commodore and Ford Falcon are gone and in their place is a new generation of imported sporty sedans. The underrated Skoda Superb, the much hyped Kia Stinger, the revived Toyota Camry V6 and of course this, the all new Holden Commodore. These are the flagship models in their respective ranges, but that's about the only similarity between them. We have a naturally aspirated V6 all-wheel drive, naturally aspirated V6 front-wheel drive, twin turbo V6 rear-wheel drive, and a turbocharged four-cylinder all-wheel drive. Picking a winner won't be easy, so there's no time to waste. The locally built Holden Commodore may be gone, but the name lives on with this all-new imported model. We're driving the new Commodore VXR, which effectively replaces the SS as the performance hero in the range. But the V8 is gone and instead we get a V6, all-wheel drive machine that's built in Germany, not Melbourne. The VXR is priced from $55,990 and comes well equipped with loads of goodies, including 20-inch alloy wheels, a sports body kit, adaptive suspension, Brembo front brakes, a sunroof, navigation, a colour heads-up display, there's wireless smartphone charging and a Bose premium sound system. Safety gear includes forward collision warning, autonomous emergency braking, lane keeping assist and lane departure warning, as well as blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert and a 360 degree parking camera. So it's got plenty of equipment. Inside you really can tell it's an Opal. There's a lot of styling cues and switch gear that seems to have come straight off the Astra hatch. I mean, overall the design is nice, it, you know, it looks premium, there's a nice mixture of materials. Unfortunately, some of those materials are quite cheap in terms of look and feel. There's real hard plastics that detract from the overall ambience of the cabin. Having said that, I mean, there's some sporty touches too for this VXR. The seats in particular, they're massage, electric, they look really cool. They are a little tight around the middle and they can be a little uncomfortable after a long journey, but overall the cabin's just a bit hit and miss for me. The Commodore VXR is powered by 3.6 litre V6 that produces 235 kilowatts of power and 381 newton metres of torque, and it's paired to a nine-speed automatic transmission. As for how it drives, well, it's a very different proposition from the Commodores of before. Not worse per se, definitely not better, but a very different machine. The steering feel could be better, it's a bit light, and just lacks that kind of feel and feedback that VF Commodore especially was so renowned for. And the ride, despite the input that Holden has had down at its Langland Proving Grounds in Victoria, it still actually could be improved. I think the, the bigger bump stuff is good. It actually settles quite quickly once you hit those big bumps, but over sort of small repeated bumps or an uneven surface, the ride can get a little jittery, which part of that's probably down to the fact it's riding on such big wheels, but it doesn't feel quite as tailored to Australian roads as Commodores that were built here. So again, it's just a different experience. But when you really push on and you want that sporty feel, it's actually quite impressive. It's got good response, it, it turns into corners quite well, it's got good grip from these Michelin tyres. Again, it just goes back to that. It's different, but just because something's different doesn't mean it's necessarily worse than what came before it. So, for those enthusiasts that want the sporty family sedan, well, the Commodore really should still be on the list. Few cars have arrived with as much hype as the Kia Stinger. This is a major department for the South Korean company, a twin turbocharged rear wheel drive sports sedan that it hopes will permanently change the way people look at the brand. Priced from 55,990, the Stinger 330 SI we're testing here matches the Commodore on price. It's also well equipped with 19 inch alloys, a limited slip diff, eight way adjustable driver's seat, Bluetooth and eight inch touchscreen compatible with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay and a nine speaker sound system, all standard. Safety gear includes reversing camera, parking sensors, radar cruise control, autonomous emergency braking with forward collision warning, lane keeping assist and driver fatigue alert. Kia has come a long way in many respects in the last few years, but none more so than design. And the cabin of the Stinger is a prime example of that. It's a really well presented, well finished car. Look, sure there's some styling cues that may have been borrowed from certain German luxury brands, but overall this is a really well executed cabin. The star attraction of the Stinger is the engine, a 3.3 litre twin turbo V6 boasting 272 kilowatts and 510 newton metres that sends its power to the rear wheels via an 8 speed automatic transmission. Now those numbers make it 
the most powerful of our quartet here and it feels it on the road. You just put your foot down and it's really got some grunt, like it's got real surge from right down low in the rev range. And the eight speed auto does a really good job. It can you know, flow through the gears nicely and really keep the engine on the boil. So in terms of what's under the bonnet, the Kia really does stand out. As for how it drives, well, this is the rear wheel drive member of the crew here. And for people looking for that replacement for the old fashioned Aussie Commodore and Falcon, it can kind of fill that niche to a degree, but it really is something different. Kia has done a good job on the local ride and handling. It rides Australia's pretty average roads quite well. It's got good control. But one thing that does bother me, and it's bothered me every time I've driven the Stinger, is just how tail happy it is. Even today on these roads, you know, if you give it a little bit too much gas, you know, not that much, but give it a little bit too much out of a tight corner or something, and the tail will start to snap out and you can give you quite a lot of angle before the stability control systems really bring everything back under control. So if you're not careful, the Stinger really can bite you. As drive regulars will be aware, we're fans of the new Camry. It may not be built in Australia anymore, but this new generation model is an improvement in every other respect. Now that it's imported, Toyota has ditched the Orion brand in for the six cylinder model and revived the Camry V6 nameplate. The SX model we're testing here has a huge price advantage over its competitors. It's more than $18,000 cheaper than the Holden and Kia, and it doesn't miss out on standard gear. There's 19 inch alloys, LED headlights, dual zone air conditioning, keyless entry and ignition, leather accented sports seats, an 8 inch infotainment display, navigation, Bluetooth, rear USB ports and wireless smartphone charging, all included in the $37,290 asking price. It also gets key safety equipment including AEB, lane departure warning, automatic high beams, adaptive cruise and a reversing camera. As we've said in previous reviews of the Camry, this latest generation model is a big step forward in terms of its cabin presentation. It's no longer the plain, boring Camry of old. It's got a more interesting layout with more materials used, you know, a higher quality feeling inside. However, in this particular contest, it just lacks that, you know, that X factor that I think the other three cars here have. Like the Holden, the Camry gets a naturally aspirated V6. The 3.5 litre unit produces 224 kilowatts and 362 newton meters and is paired to an eight speed auto. But unlike the rear and all wheel drive rivals, the Camry V6 remains strictly a front wheel drive proposition. While there's no doubt this latest Camry is a huge step forward in terms of its driving dynamic over its predecessors, in this contest does still feel a step behind the best of the best. The engine, it's good, it's got decent grunt, but you do have to give it some revs. It really only comes alive after about 4,000 RPM. Once it does though, it actually has got some, some good punch. And the 8-speed auto does a good job around town. It's really smooth and it does, you have got these paddles behind the steering wheel if you want to be a bit sporty. As for its dynamic capabilities, look, yes, it is the best Camry ever, but in this contest, it does feel at the bottom of the pecking order. It just lacks that sharpness, the precision that the other cars have. It's a bit more softly sprung. So while it rides quite comfortably, it doesn't feel as agile and precise when you get into some twisty corners. So for the enthusiast driver, this is probably the one you're not for last, unfortunately. The Skoda Superb may not be a bestseller, but in its 162 TSI wagon guys, it's a two-time champion of Drive's best family car at our Car of the Year Awards. For this contest, we're using the range-topping Sportline model, which gets a turbocharged engine and all-wheel drive for some serious performance. It's the most expensive of this group, but only slightly dearer than the Holden or Kia at 56,790. But you get 19-inch alloys, keyless entry and ignition, leather sports seats, a flat bottom steering wheel, piano black and red interior highlights, some gloss black exterior highlights, as well as some clever Skoda touches like rear sun blinds, the umbrellas hidden in the front doors, and of course there's Bluetooth navigation and an eight speaker sound system. You also get autonomous emergency braking and a reversing camera as standard, but if you want extra active safety features, that comes part of an option package. Some still think of Skoda as Volkswagen's cheaper sibling, but that's not really the case anymore. There's a real premium look and feel to the Superb. And in the Sportline, there's some nice touches that give it that sporty feel. This 
flat bottomed leather wrapped steering wheel, these nice stylish supportive seats, but of course there's still the uh, clever touches that Skoda's known for like the little ticket holder on the windscreen and a bin down in the door pocket here. Power comes from the same 2 litre turbocharged 4 cylinder petrol engine that is found in the potent Volkswagen Golf R hot hatch. It's good for 206 kilowatts and 350 newton metres and is mated to a 6 speed dual clutch automatic transmission and Volkswagen's 4 motion all wheel drive system. On paper then, the Skoda is the least potent of this group but on the road, it doesn't feel like it's giving anything away to its six cylinder rivals. This little four cylinder has got plenty of poke, and it's particularly good from down low in the rev range, which the naturally aspirated cars in this contest don't have. It feels much punchier lower down and off the mark, which is really what you want most of the time. As for how it handles well, it's not exactly a big Golf R. This is quite a sizable car. There's no escaping the fact that this is a full-size large sedan and so it feels a bit slower to react sometimes than say the Stinger especially that you know feels quite lively this feels a little bit more stable in some ways a little bit more planted but also it just feels also a little bit slower to react but overall though it's a very impressive car look at the end of the day it may only be a four-cylinder but the Superb has more than enough of all the attributes you want in a sporty sedan to hold its own against its V6 rivals. Picking a winner really wasn't easy. There's not much separating these four cars as each of them is spacious and sporty in their own way. The Toyota represents the best value by far and it's still an enjoyable car to drive but maybe not quite as sharp as its competitors. The Skoda may have a smaller engine but you don't notice it on the road and what the engine lacks in size, the Superb makes up for in interior space. While the Holden Commodore may be an all new machine that bears little resemblance to what went before it, it's still a spacious family car that mum and dad can enjoy driving. Which leaves the Kia Stinger at the top of this new order. But not by much. In a close contest, it was only small margins that separated these rivals. Ultimately, the Stinger does the best job of being sporty, spacious and stylish for less than 60 grand. In truth though, I'd be happy with any of these four. Because there is no new order. Each of these sporty sedans makes a compelling argument.